Merry Christmas everyone, it is finally the silly season. And what better way to get silly than with a 10% Imperial Christmas Gingerbread Stout. Let's show you how we made it. To make this beer, we are going to need a lot of grain because we tried a few times to hit over 10%. This time it will absolutely happen because we are using over 20 kilos of grain, which is over 44 pounds. So that's a lot of grain for something this size. Now that is made up of uh, just over 10 kilos of pale malt, three kilos of dark Munich, 1.6 kilos of rolled oats, 1.6 of wheat, 1.41 of dark chocolate, 1.41 of medium crystal, one kilo of roast barley, um, 1.7 kilos of rice hulls, not contributing to the actual, you know, fermentables or anything. And then to finish off, one kilogram of dark Belgium candy syrup, or more specifically, extra dark Belgium candy syrup. So this is also not contributing to that 20 kilos of grain. That's another kilo of fermentables. So there's going to be a lot of sugar in this beer. So it better bloody hit over 10%. According to Brewfather, we're going to get 10.9. I hope we get over that. Anyway. Let's get to milling, shall we? Water chemistry. Now, we're not gonna do a full video on water chemistry for today. If you guys are interested, we can do a whole separate video where we just talk about brewing salts and how to use them. But for today's purposes, as a rule of thumb, what we're going for is a one to two ratio of sulfate to chloride so that we're emphasizing the maltiness of this beer. We're really trying to lean into that malt profile and we're trying to kind of minimize the, the hop characteristics going on. So that goes into the water now and all the, whoop, Salts are stuck. All the annotations uh, obviously will go up on screen, courtesy of Odin. Jeez Louise. Ah, that's done. Okay, we're also gonna add some salts to the um, sparge water. So into the hot liquor ton is, again, similar water profile, obviously less of it because there's less sparge water today than mash water, but similar profile going in up top over here. Nice things I do for YouTube. <laughs> Honestly, this hat is hot. <sighs> okay, now we're ready to mash in. So we are mashing in with 69 degrees Celsius water, 60 liters of it. For those of you that are obviously uh, Imperial, for those of you that are new to the channel and haven't seen these videos before, we are using the Brewzilla 65 liter generation three. Um, and we're using a size extension on it today as well because we're working with a lot of grain. We do have a review video of this particular unit, links to that video up there or wherever, if you do wanna check it out or if you're curious about getting one. Anyway, now getting into the mashing, this is gonna take a bit of work. But the idea behind this beer is we want it to be extremely voluptuous, have massive body, really high booze to uh, um, help you know, balance out the, the huge body on this thing. We um, have got a bunch of oats and uh, wheat in here to add to that silkiness and that creaminess and that voluptuous texture. We've got a heap of, uh, of Munich malt in here to add to that breadiness and give layers of, um, how would you describe it? Just give layers of, of, of breadiness, maltiness, kind of that, that German style of grain that just tastes so fantastic. And then there's obviously a ton of chocolate malt in here to really provide the backbone of the chocolate and the like the the bitter chocolate coffee kind of flavor, as well as a full kilo, 2.2 pounds of dark of our roasted malt to um, really add to that espresso burnt coffee character, the kind of thing that you don't really get from chocolate malt. So the two uh, roasted malts together are really going to provide the the ultimate base and the the main flavor for the beer that we're making today. It's all about leaning into those dark roasty malts and we're already getting a ton of color. Look at that. Amazing how fast that works. Um, yeah, so that's that's the whole idea behind this beer. We want big, bold, robust flavors, roasty flavors that really make you want to just sit next to a uh, the Christmas tree and sip it slowly with some cookies as you've got the fireplace going in the background. Or if you live in Australia, you know, just sweating your butt off in the backyard in the middle of a 40 degree summer's day. All right, let's get some more in there. Oh, look at that coming out now though. Ooh, that color. So much grain. You know what, even with the extension on, we're gonna come very close to hitting capacity with this thing. So 
we're having a little challenge with capacity in this thing. Uh, so my strategy is I'm draining out a bunch of this early wort as I'm mashing in to just make all these grains just drop a bit of level so I've got more space to put in the rest of the grains. And then once I'm finished mashing in, I'll whack all this, uh, this liquid back in here and then start the clock for the, for the 90 minutes of mash. The OG on that, the original gravity, honestly would probably already be high enough to just start fermenting a, a beer with. That would probably be high enough to make a regular stout as it is. I don't know if the enzymes would have converted everything yet, but there's enough put sugar it, in there. Don't put any hops in it, just convert it straight. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, ladies and gentlemen, that is the last of the grain. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, here we go. All right, time to whack on the top filter. You notice we're not using the, uh, the, the middle, what do you call it, the drainage pipe today, just because there's so much grain in this, there was no chance of using that thing. So we're just placing basically a screen on the very top, just to uh, prevent, as we start recirculating this, too much grain, you know, getting sucked through the pump, blocking it up, causing issues, and breaking my equipment. So that's done. I need to add the rest of this back in. This will be interesting. All right. <laughs> I've never seen this thing so full before. Oh, look how full. That's a big chalky milk. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. Nice. I would love to know if anyone has ever pushed the Brusilla this hard before. So yeah. combined with the rice hulls, there is 22 kilos in here, which is, what is that in freedom units? That's double, right? So 48 pounds of grain. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> but now time to start recirculating this thing. So I'm going to whack back on that recirculating sparge arm. Where did I put it? There she is. All right, and now we can let this ride. So if I didn't mention it before, we are going to go for a full 90 minute mash at the 69 degrees Celsius. Reason being, we are pushing it a little bit with the diastatic power. There is a lot of specialty malts in here. So I want to give the enzymes their best chance at actually digesting everything and making it fermentable. So and that will also help with our efficiency a little bit, particularly going for a super high gravity beer. Now, start your clocks. We're gonna let this sit for one hour at 90 degrees Celsius, as well as a 15 minute uh, mash out. So raising the temperature up to 77, no, 76 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes at the end of that. I normally don't bother too much with a mash out, but for something this big and this goopy, I want the mash out to try and make this water, this liquid a little more viscous and prevent the issues of a stuck sparge. Anyway, start your clocks and we'll be back at the end of this. Transition. Uh, so we're back at the end, <laughs> at the end of boil, uh, at the end of mash. So we're now starting to sparge. As you can hear, it's draining. Thank God, thank God. That's always a concern when you've got such a heavy grain bill. Anyway, so the idea now is we're gonna do fly sparging. So what that means is I need the water from the hot liquor tongue to flow over on top of the grain bed at the same rate that this is flowing out of the grain bed so that all the liquid level stays the same, but slowly the gravity keeps dropping throughout the beer. And then, you know, we sparge out all those extra sugars. So kind of wringing out the sponge, so to speak. So I'm just gonna restrict the flow slightly on the hot liquor tank. Do a nice, slow sparge. Now, while we're here, I will also mention that, uh, and by the way, do you wanna come, do you want me to show you this with the, there? So this, um, this thing that, this little sergeant, uh, what was it called? Sergeant Spray, Sergeant Sparge, whatever it's called, from Kegland. Uh, we used it throughout the mash, but you can also use it for sparging. It's absolutely excellent. Anyway, uh, we did something called an acid sparge. So we also used, I think it was two mils from memory, uh, corrections up there, of phosphoric acid. And what that means is we dropped the acidity of the sparge water to 5.5 pH, I believe is what I did. And that just helps with sparge efficiencies and not getting too much astringency out of the grains. So if you look at the top here, you can see the, uh, the clearness or like the lack of color on the top now where that used to be just black. Now, whoops, it's becoming ah, more and more clear and it, things are going wrong. <laughs> Ow. So before I burnt my fingers, um, what I was trying to show was like the clarity of the, of the top there. That's because as the liquid drains through, 
the, the top becomes lower and lower in gravity and it basically eventually just becomes water. And that's our idea of fly sparging is that gravity level just keeps shifting all the way down. As long as you're draining out at the same rate that you're topping it up from the top. That burnt my fingers. This is all gonna sparge through. 16 liters, liters of sparge water and we'll come back to this when it's time to boil. Okay, sparging is finished and now it's time to take a gravity reading. So let's get a quick little sample. Pop her on there. Oh, probably a bit too much. That's right. Uh, we have not yet added the candy syrup. We are sitting at about, what is that? About 1.077-ish. Um, so let's add this candy syrup in now and see where we end up. <laughs> All right, that is thick. I am curious to see how many gravity points that we get out of this candy. Well, I guess now is a good time to talk about it. So the whole reason behind adding the candy syrup is twofold. One is uh, it's gonna help boost our gravity when we're going for really high ADV beer. But two, Belgian candy syrup is made from beet beet uh, beetroots concentrate and it's boiled and boiled, all the sugars are taken out, blah, 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 a bunch of things are done to it. And what you're left with is a syrup, like especially the double um, extra dark syrup is like intensely like uh, like like what's the word I'm looking like pudding like um like dates like sticky dates like prunes a little bit it's like really rich really sweet dark fruits so all of that will complement quite nicely in a Christmas stout one more so this is a full kilo of this by the way so 2.2 pounds We're now about to add our 90 minute hop addition, but to give you some context first, we have already boiled this for half an hour. So it's technically a two hour boil, but we haven't added any hops in yet. Reason we did that is because our original gravity was a little bit low. With that extra half an hour of boil, we've hit 1.084. What we actually wanted before boil, our pre-boil gravity is 1.09. Close enough, didn't quite hit it, and that's why we did the extra half hour. But now, we're gonna throw in our 52 and a bit grams of Northern Brewer hops for the start of our 90 minute hop edition. So, let's pour them in. And start your clocks. Now, while I start mine, I'll quickly explain like the actual style of beer that we're brewing here. So technically, I think the style of beer that we're brewing that it's closest to would probably be a Russian Imperial Stout but we're not hitting the kind of bitterness that a Russian Imperial Stout has. So typically a Russian Imperial sits between 50 to 80 IBUs, so it's actually quite bitter. I'm only throwing enough hops in to sit around 30 IBUs because I don't really want this to be a balls to the wall bitter beer. I kind of want all the malts and different spices and everything we're gonna add to be the star of the show. So 30 IBUs is solid enough bitterness that is hopefully balanced with all the alcohol and the sugar that's remaining in this thing. So yeah, it's kind of a pseudo Russian Imperial Stout with a big Christmas dessert twist. I guess it's just a gingerbread Christmas Stout. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we now have 15 minutes left in the boil, which means it's time to add Whirl Flock, which just goes in like so, as well as the 15 minute addition of hops, which is uh, 50 grams each, 50 grams? Yeah, 50 grams each of Northern Brewer and Fuggles. <laughs> and now it is time for the smell of Christmas. So this is a mixture of a bunch of different spices soaked in vodka. So it's a mixture of cinnamon, allspice, vanilla, nutmeg, and kibbled ginger all mixed together and soaked for a week in vodka, uh, six days, uh, and I made two of them identical. One of them is gonna go into the fermenter at the end of fermentation. The other one was strained and separated so that all the dry stuff is gonna go into the boiler now at flame out, which I better do flame out. Let's throw all these into the, let's try to get them in the hop spider, I guess, make life easier for myself. And the rest can just kind of go in there. Now the other mixture, this one right here, the liquid, this is gonna go into the fermenter when we transfer all of this wort into the fermenter at the same time. So, 
Anyway, now let's start whirlpooling, cooling this thing down to yeast pitching temperature, and we'll be back when we start transferring. <laughs> let's see, let's see. Well, this is telling me 1.096. I'm not convinced this is all mixed up properly yet. I'm hoping it's not because I want it to be higher. But if that is what it is, look, not the worst thing in the world. That will just get to 10% if this thing ferments out to 1.02. With the vodka additions, that little bit of vodka in those additions, it will be over 10%, but oh man, I was hoping to hit like 10.8 or 11. Doesn't matter, we're still getting double digits with this. So I'm happy. I'm relatively happy. <laughs> Maybe. He's sad. <laughs> He's crying inside. <laughs> oh yeah, and the liquid dropped quite a bit. So we boiled off. Um, that's now at, what is that, 53 liters. So we boiled off like seven liters or something. So a lot of evaporation to, to bring that gravity up. Nice. We're now ready to transfer. So the temp is coming out of the, um, the chiller plate at 25 degrees Celsius, which is bang on for yeast pitching. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw in the uh, tincture of vodka stuff. Oh, it smells so good, it tastes awful. It's so spicy, like, you know, cooking spice. Nice. Get all that gingery, gingery goodness in there. Obviously, this we're calling this a gingerbread Christmas stout. And these were all like Christmassy spices and a bunch of kibbled ginger. So hopefully all that comes through as like a um kind of oh that's a big bang. Hopefully all of that comes through as like a uh, like undercurrents in the main flavor of the roast. We don't want it to just be only a ginger stout, but we want it to kind of influence and all mingle together. Uh, let's talk yeast. I'll be back in a sec. So we are using two packets of Lalbrew Nottingham Ale Yeast. We have also done a pretty healthy starter with this. So we started this starter two days ago to get maximum cell growth. Um, so there should be some pretty healthy yeasties in here ready to munch up all of those sugars because this is a very high gravity beer. Now we're gonna ferment at 20 degrees Celsius. I expect fermentation to be mostly complete within a week, but we might leave it too, depending on how things are going. When we hit final gravity, we will transfer half of this into uh, a barrel and the other half straight into kegs. So the next time you guys see us will be when I'm doing that barrel transfer. So see you then. I just realized I lied. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually gonna see me when I put the tincture of spices into the thing. So you'll briefly see me when I pop this in and then you'll see me transfer into a barrel. <laughs> now it is time to add the spices into the tank. So it's been about a week and a bit, about eight days-ish of fermentation, and gravity is looking pretty stable around 1.024. I'm gonna let it ride for a couple more days, bump the temperature up a bit for a dacetyl rest, but I think we're basically at final gravity. But it is time to add these spices in, so I'm just gonna use the dry hopping device. Anyway, let's pop that back on there. We'll give it a couple purges with the gas, just to make sure that we're not introducing any oxygen into this thing and ruining all of our hard work. But at this stage, it looks like if we stay at um, 1.024, we're looking at about a 9.6, 9.7% beer. So I kind of hope we can get down a few more gravity points, but I don't know. Either way, if we don't hit the 10%, it's still already tasting fantastic. I've taken a taste with the sample from the gravity reading and it's good. It's very, very good. The ginger, the spice, the vanilla, and then all the rich, dark malts are all coming through in a really, really big way. So anyway, that's all in there. Spices are in, and now we will come back when I start transferring this into a keg and into a barrel. Now we are ready to transfer. So we're gonna whack half into the barrel, just like last time, and we're gonna whack half into a keg. So let me get this quickly set up and then I'll talk about like stats and numbers and stuff. And that little hiss you hear there is the carbon dioxide leaving this barrel. So now let's whack this tubing in until it hits the bottom. It's about there. Put the little bung in place. All right, turn on our digital scales and we should be good to go. We are transferring. While that's transferring, I'll talk through stats a little bit. We ended up finishing at a final gravity of about 1.022, which gives us, if my mass is right, about a 
four, 5% beer. So we're like half a percent ish off. But then uh, doing some quick mass on the vodka that was used to make the tinctures and do the extracts, I think we actually clocked to 10%. I'm also willing to say that there was probably a bit of a mistake with the gravity reading on the brew day because I got some readings that were above 1.1. I got some readings that were like 1.097. So I've just got a feeling that my refractometer and my hydrometer aren't great at being uh, accurate at that higher gravity. I just don't think they're calibrated for it. And you can get specific hydrometers that work better within set um, ranges. So you can have one that's for like medium gravity, then higher gravity, then extra high gravity. I should probably invest in getting one of those because I just don't think the original gravity reading was all that crash hot. So I'm willing to call it 10% because I think there was a little bit of bias there and I erred on the side of caution. So 10% stout. Finally got there. Now I'm gonna finish transferring this off camera. I'll whack the other half into this keg right here. And then you guys will see us very, very soon when we start drinking this thing. And here she is. So she did indeed come out to a massive 10%. It's super black, super rich, incredibly delicious. Um, very roasty, so more roasty than any other stouts we've done on the channel so far. Leaning far less away from like sweet dark chocolates or milk chocolates and certainly more into burnt coffee slash uh, like espresso character. Mm. Really nice silky body. Not super, super thick. Obviously that 10% booze is really cutting into it and it is slightly undercarbed at the moment, but I was too excited to shoot this video, so. Sorry guys, and I have had a couple of these and <laughs> they kick, they kick like a big one. But it's um, absolutely sensational. Like with the spice character, that ginger really punches through quite strong. Not in a way that overpowers the beer, but in a way that really makes its presence known. I wouldn't call it gingerbread style baked ginger. It's more like a fresh ginger that has come through, which I don't mind, it's interesting. Not quite what I was going for, but very flavorsome. And then you kind of have these other lingering spices in the background. Like I can definitely taste a bit of cinnamon going on. There is like some something around vanilla there in the background, uh, kind of mingling with the sweetness from the malts. So it's kind of like this toffee, vanilla, caramel sweetness all jumbling together. And that sweetness really does balance this thing out because it is very, very boozy and it's quite roasty. That sweetness is just perfectly in balance. The one thing that I might change next time I do this, seeing as it is an imperial stout, is probably bring up the IBUs a bit. I was quite hesitant about bringing that up, but, uh, and we left it at like a, a steady, I think it was like 34 or something, like quite low. Would be curious to see what this tastes like if I bumped that way up to like 60 IBUs, but that's a brew for next time. In any case, it is absolutely sensational, and I'm super curious to see what it turns into after a few months of aging away there in that barrel, but, you guys will be, have to be just as patient as we will have to be. In any case, guys, uh, look, I just want to say a very Merry Christmas to all of you and a Happy New Year because this will probably be our last video for the year on this channel. So thank you to everyone that has joined us this year and come along on the journey with us. It's uh, an absolute pleasure to make these videos for you guys. We love it when you leave us comments and ideas, suggestions, and just general showing interest in what we're doing here. It just makes it all so, so worth it. So take a bit of time to uh, enjoy a couple of home brews, kick back with the family, and just reset and chill a little bit before 2024. So exciting things for next year, which we'll fill you in on in a couple of months. Anyway, guys, Merry Christmas. Have a great one. See you next year.